Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So I am Zulfikar Mohammed, and uh, I'll take up uh, Indian economy. And here we will discuss the strategy to uh, study Indian economy, and especially from GS perspective, prelims come means. Okay, so let me introduce myself first. As I told you, I am Zulfikar, and uh, I am serving you people since almost more than 18 years. And uh, earlier I was in Delhi University. I was lecturer in Delhi University, but now. I'm exclu exclusively ser serving you people. Okay, so today, as I told you, we will discuss ki how to approach economy, Indian economy from GS perspective, or, or in other words, we can say the strategy to tackle Indian economy. Okay, so we will discuss few aspects. First of all, ki what to study. Means what to study means what not to study, means what is relevance for prelims as well as for mains. Okay, and we will see on the basis of uh, the uh, syllabus of prelims and means as well as questions of these exams. Second thing we'll discuss is how to study. Means how to study means what should be the approach of learning, especially in economics, to how to learn, how to revise, how to make notes, synopsis, and including answer writing. Then how much to study? What should be approach to what uh, uh, to what extent you have to go, uh, and how many sources you have to add. And then uh, next we will discuss the uh, sources from where to study, like the books, to so NCRTs and other books. Uh, then we will discuss uh, current issues. Uh, that uh, uh, means uh, what is relevant, what is not relevant, how many sources, which sources you can refer, economic survey, budget, etc. Uh, apart from that, I will do some brief analysis of the questions which have been asked in the past few years of prelims as well as of mains. So this will be our uh, means points of discussion today. Okay, so first of all, I will start with, uh, as I told you, we will discuss the how to approach Indian economy for general studies. So first of all, uh, I will discuss what to study. Now, the most important thing in this exam is that ki what is uh, relevant. So here, we will focus on ki what is actually relevant. Because in UPSC, anything could be asked. And after exam, you cannot say uh, that was out of syllabus. So there is nothing as such uh, out of syllabus. So relevance is very, very important because there is no dearth of knowledge. You may do research in any particular subject, but still, you know, you have to draw a line. Okay? So this, uh, you know, relevance, uh, especially what not to study is much more important in the current context. Especially now, uh, we are now uh, in the uh, you know uh, in the age of information bombardment. Lot of information is there. Let us suppose if you put any uh, means like on Google, okay, which book should I read for economy or which study material? You will find a long list of books, maybe 20, 30 uh, books, study materials, and various sources you will find. So th the most important problem is that now you cannot study all those sources. And you don't have time because syllabus is too long, you know. Uh, you, uh, even GS is too long than optional CSAT, obviously. So uh, here, my, our objective is to uh, optimize your effort. Ke in minimum effort, how you can get maximum outcome. Okay, so relevance, first of all, we will discuss. And relevance, you know, which, which thing is relevant and uh, which is not relevant, from where you'll get idea, there are two things, actually. Uh, one is the syllabus of UPSC, and second is questions. Okay, for example, if we talk about uh, for prelims, relevant, uh, actually, uh, for prelims. For prelims, uh, obviously, as I told you, okay, two things are there. One is syllabus, and other is previous year's questions. Now, uh, for prelims, which is more important? Slavers will give you better idea of previous year's questions. So in economy section especially, or in general also, you know, slavers don't give you much idea. They have mentioned only few topics like Indian economy, planning, uh, and uh, 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 inclusive growth, etc. Only few topics they have mentioned. So slavers is not well defined in prelims. So slavers will not give you much idea. So you will get idea Okay, what is relevant, what is not relevant from the analysis of previous year's questions. So this is most important. So you have to analyze questions of uh, maybe at least 10 years or preferably maybe more even 20 years. Okay, what kind of questions were asked? I, will, I have done some analysis. I will show you 
uh, the which questions were asked in the past few years. So I have done analysis from which section, how many questions were asked in the recent years. Okay, I'll show you through the uh, uh, through PPT. I will show you this case, what questions are important, which areas are important for prelims. So briefly, like the most important area, most of the questions are from money and banking, finance, money, banking, money supply, maximum questions. Then second, uh, because on an average, about uh, 20 to 25 questions are there in uh, from economy section in prelims. So out of 100, uh, usually now almost on an average 25 questions are there. And out of 25, you, you can see at least seven, eight questions at least are from uh, money and banking, the most important sector. Second sector is uh, external sector. External sector consists of like FDI, um, um, exchange rate system, balance of payments, international organizations, etc. Second most most important section is that section. So from that section, three, four, five, almost four, five questions on an average you can expect. Okay, these two are most important sections. I will give you analysis in the end. So this is actually for prelims. Now for means, for means exam again. I will go for syllabus as well as the questions. So syllabus here is more important or less important here. As I told you, syllabus is not much important here. It hardly will help you, will give you any idea about the, uh, the relevance. So here syllabus is very, very important. In means, you know, if you do analysis of the, of the questions in the last 10 years since pattern change, change in means, so you will find at least more than 80% questions in means were directly from the syllabus and that is very limited. So it is much easier to uh, handle means exam because you can predict at least 80% questions directly you can predict. The topic, subtopics you can predict okay, which dimensions they will ask. Okay, because as I told you, okay, more than 80% questions are directly from the syllabus. I will give you this analysis of these uh, questions in the last few years. Okay, so syllabus is very, very important and so that I think so main syllabus, uh, you should rather cram the syllabus, just uh, stick on your, uh, you know, uh, table and then actually study table and it should be uh, just try to uh, learn. You should know by heart what topics are there so that whenever you are reading any book or newspaper or anything, you should have idea ke, uh, is it related with syllabus or not. Now second is uh, previous years questions. So obviously previous years questions uh, will give you idea ki which sections are relatively more important. But here, uh, the you will get the approach at sector depth from these previous years questions. They are certainly important, and uh, uh, but uh, you must remember syllabus. And as I told you, I will show you this correlation ke, uh, that from which areas how many questions from which area of syllabus how many questions were asked in the last few years. Okay, so first thing is this: ki relevance uh, relevance is very very important. Okay, and for relevance in general, you know, class notes are always uh, good because teachers, you know, they have idea about orientation about this exam. So that is why class notes are always relevant. Okay, the, the, I'll discuss that in sources. Now, what to study? Now, next is how to study. Okay, I will come back uh, to this analysis. Now, how to study means, so first of all, uh, rather, I will say ke never study. When you say ke I am studying, to always learn. Okay, to focus should always be learning. Okay, to don't study, but rather learn. So what is difference in studying and learning? Studying means normally when you say ke I am studying, you are just uh, counting the hours or time ke I have devoted, devoted this much time, I have to study maybe six hours a day. I have studied this, I have read this chapter, this chapter, I have to read this chapter. But remember one thing, studying or reading won't help until unless you learn. So learning, focus should be on learning. Now what is difference in uh, studying and learning? So in general, studying or reading means you have just read a chapter, you have some broad idea, but it won't do in exam. So it should be clear, you should be able to learn. Now what is learning? Learning simply means understanding. If you have understood something, that is learned, nothing more than that. So learning simply means what? Focus on understanding. So if you have understood something, uh, that is learned. And understood means you can explain in your own words. And do you think in once you are learning, uh, you have to remember language, cram exact language. Uh, language is needed or not? What do you think? So obviously language is not needed. Uh, why language is not needed? Because in prelims, you have to just encircle. And in means, you actually have to write answer in your own words. 
you it is not possible ki teacher can give you some model answers and you can cram and directly put them no it is not possible because in means questions are tilted they are uh, means correlating the different topics and from one subject or even from different subjects also so you have to understand and see what exactly is asked accordingly you have to write answer so no need for cramming language to so focus on just understanding so if you have understood something that is learned so for example i will give you an illustration uh take an any topic like uh, so any topic uh, you want for example i will take uh, example like one uh, any term like let's suppose from money and banking i will take one term like uh, cash reserve ratio cash reserve ratio crr okay i think most of you may have idea so or if some of you may not have idea about this too, but i'll explain ki what is meaning of learning so if you have understood something that is learned i want to make this point uh, clear ki cash reserve ratio to what is crr simply it is percentage of deposits of a bank which bank that bank has to keep with rbi in cash okay to percentage of deposits of bank which bank has to keep with uh, with rbi okay so for example uh, right now crr is how much right now crr is uh, 3% okay to so 3% so it means that percentage of deposits of banks which they have to keep with rbi in cash to so in the form of cash for example if you deposit 100 rupee in a bank so that bank has to uh, transfer out of 100 3% means 3 rupee will with rbi that is crr or other example if you deposit 1 lakh rupee in your bank account so that bank has to transfer uh, 3% of 1 lakh is 3000 rupee 3000 in cash has to transfer to the rbi that is cash reserve ratio so what the point here so crr is actually cash reserve ratio so which shows ki percentage of deposits or bank which bank have to keep with rbi okay so have you understood simple because uh, in class we will go in much detail and i'm just explaining ki what is learning if you have understood ki the when you deposit money in bank to bank has to transfer 3% of that money with rbi and that is called cash reserve ratio like in cash it is kept in cash and it is reserve bank have to keep with rbi to bank have to keep cash means reserves in the form of cash with rbi okay and we will discuss in much detail what are implications for example if rbi will uh, increase crr maybe from 3% to 4% to what will happen to so bank have to keep more money with rbi to so bank got the point if uh, rbi will increase from 3 to 4 then bank has to keep 4% more money to so bank will have less money or more money for giving loans to so obviously more money will be held up with rbi to so less money will be available for giving loans and then bank lending will reduce and overall people actually borrow and then they buy things so demand will reduce in the economy to so if rbi will increase crr let us suppose from 3% to 4% so to what will happen banks have to keep more cash with rbi and they will have less cash for giving loans so overall people will be able to borrow less and spend less so spending means demand will decrease and when demand will reduce normally price reduces so whenever there is inflation prices are going up so rbi may increase crr okay this is how it works so i just give you a brief idea ki if you have understood the uh, term it is clear so and it is part of monetary policy okay now you may ask what is monetary policy very simple you know what is monetary policy okay i am giving you only brief idea in class it will take time like monetary policy will take more than one hour one and half hour at least because what is monetary policy issues and reforms lot of issues are there current reforms current uh, you know changes in monetary policy will discuss so monetary policy simply means what so you must be having idea monetary policy uh, is drafted by which institution in india so obviously rbi rbi you know reserve bank of india central bank of india so monetary policy you know is drafted by uh, central bank okay and what is focus of monetary policy to so focus is to regulate money supply so very simple so it is the policy through which central bank that is in india that is rbi regulates money supply in the economy okay so got the point so what is monetary policy so monetary means related with money means money supply total currency and bank lending in the economy so monetary policy means related with money so it deals with what it is the policy through which central bank regulates money supply in the economy 
to very simple the policy through which rbi regulates money uh, in the economy or money supply in the economy that is monetary policy and one instrument of monetary policy is like cash reserve ratio i told you ki the percentage of deposits which bank have to keep with rbi so this is just a illustration ki uh, now other terms like maybe what is fiscal policy fiscal policy fiscal actually means uh, fisc means uh, government uh, fund government treasury so fiscal policy means ke policy deals with dealing with government's fund how much re money received by government and paid by government so fiscal policy deals with government finances so it may be called budgetary policy also okay so fiscal policy is drafted by which uh, you know uh, part of government which institution so you must be knowing ke fiscal policy is budgetary policy who draft budget who present budget so obviously you must be knowing finance ministry so it is under finance ministry okay so fiscal policy means budgetary policy so budget deals with the receipts of government and expenditures of government so fiscal policy deals with this also okay so means uh, main source of receipt is taxes and government expenditures one type of expenditure is subsidy okay so uh, fiscal policy deals with the government finances and uh, receipts of government and expenditures of government okay so have you understood i think uh, three terms i have explained briefly ke one is cash reserve ratio ke percentage of deposits which bank have to keep with rbi in cash okay second thing i told you since it is a part of monetary policy so i just explained what is monetary policy the policy through which central bank that is rbi regulates money supply in the economy very simple and fiscal policy means budgetary policy so it deals with receipts of government like taxes or maybe borrowing and government expenditures so this is fiscal policy so i think you must have understood so i think can you express in your own words now these three terms so i think most of you can express so if you have understood this this is learned nothing more than that learning simply means this thing okay but for retaining something for now the issue is that you have understood now but maybe after 2 3 days or after a uh, few um, uh, some time you know some of you may forget what is this okay so what is there you need to uh, uh, learning is just one part second is that how you would uh, what you should do to retain it for long because you have to study the huge syllabus now and in prelims on one day you have to recollect the entire gs history geography polity etc so the only solution for that is revision so learning is just one part so first of all you have to learn learn means try to understand okay try to think what it is okay so that you can express in your own words if you let us suppose you can express in your own words uh, anything uh, to you it means that it is learned okay now how to retain this now learning is not enough because most of the students they do one mistake they learn and forget so it it means that they are just wasting their time the only thing to uh, you know uh, retain it for long is actually revision so you have to revise there is no substitute for revision so second uh, point of this is revision so you should remember there is no substitute for revision and uh, uh, if uh, somebody think ki i cannot revise again and again then certainly you know upsc is not that the cup of tea for that person to so upsc you have to revise because syllabus is too long and you have to do multiple revisions and how many revisions so mostly toppers you know they say uh, when i interact with toppers ke what you did how many times revise so literally they told, told me at least 10 to 50 times lot of toppers have told me 30 40 times i revise this thing so without revision you know you cannot retain so revision is very very important so but how to revise rather i'll suggest at least 10 to 20 revisions at least 10 to 20 revisions now you will say ke uh, so it will lead to lot of uh, wastage of time if we have learned and then keep on revising that so rather i say whatever you learn at least revise it for at least 5 7 days consistently then maybe after uh, maybe 15 days or one month so how you should will, how you will revise so one way of revision is that uh, is underlining underline once once you learn you should underline in your copy okay so uh, i as i told you don't study just learn okay and once you have learned underline your class notes or whatever book you are studying to so try to write as much as possible in your copy as well as the book because if you keep your book uh, means untouched then 
of it you know psychologically it will give an impression even you may be studying again and again it will give an impression ke it is something new for you but if you underline write something on book then you will uh, help uh, this will help in customizing that uh, book to the content of that book to underlining how to underline now most important thing is that uh, underlining process will make your process uh, learning process more uh, you know effective and it will make your study interactive how interactive because once you underline uh, you will think what is core idea and what is subsidiary idea so your process will become more uh, you know interactive and uh, learning is a process of discrimination so you will uh, automatically discriminate ki what is important what is core idea okay and then when you underline important idea core idea you will think okay tomorrow i will see this core idea will i be able to recollect other things peripheral things of this so it will then you will think interconnections will be developed and most probably when you see it tomorrow just underline part you will recollect the entire concept i'll give you a brief idea for example this is one page this is uh, one page of your copy and uh, you have written these lines okay like this is another topic you have written these lines on this okay now as you know ki you have to underline only core idea don't underline everything so let us suppose you have underlined this part this part this part this part and this part only you have underlined this much okay now while underlining you have to discriminate what is the main theme what is this topic what are the main core concept of that okay so one thing is that you already must be knowing ki you have to underline the core part now the most important thing which, which you have to keep in mind ki tomorrow i will see only this part this part whether i'll be able to recollect this thing or not to try to think this ki tomorrow when i will revise so well i'll i'll be able to recollect this part which i have not underlined this part which i have not underlined so what will happen if you think in this manner then interconnections will be developed okay what is this how they are related with this so automatically most probably if you will uh, re uh, revise tomorrow from this if you just see the underlined words you will understand the entire concept at least 80% you will understand so it will reduce the time of revision so if you uh, let's suppose you devoted maybe 2 uh, hours to learn this chapter and uh, then tomorrow if you revise it will take maybe hardly 20 minutes or at the most half an hour maybe if you have learned effectively so i think within 20 minutes you can revise so one is underlining and i think it is better to underline maybe at least twice once you can use with pen initially you will underline more once you have learned revise four five times then you may use a hi highlighter so you may underline less so that uh, just seeing lesser part you can understand the entire concept so one thing is uh, try to underline in your copy and class notes whatever you are learning it will make your learning very effective second thing is actually the best thing is to make synopsis synopsis means small short very short notes to so very short notes for example i suggest let us suppose if you are attending uh, any class to so in our my 3 hours lecture i have seen uh, on an average i think i usually dictate about 8 to 10 pages okay let us suppose you have attended a lecture you have written maybe 8 to 10 pages to so best thing is that just first learn underline and then once you have learned the class lecture then just jot down the very short notes synopsis in one page just take a4 page and in, within in one page at the most two pages means back to back just write down, write down the main points means mainly whatever you have underlined the topic and core idea so that in one glance you can understand now what is benefit of making synopsis very short notes okay so just take one page and write down actually on one page of the entire lecture so it means that you will reduce around 8 to 10 pages into one page one or at the most one and half or two pages a4 size back to back at the most so just write down main points and try to use the uh, like uh, interrelations organization ki like this is the topic it is explained by this thing it is related with two things okay to so try to make a correlation think ki how and your focus should be ki tomorrow i will see this and whether i'll be able to recollect the entire concept or not now two things you have to keep in mind while making very short notes synopsis one thing is that you should least use least words or maximum words here so obviously the least words don't use language just write down words okay so one thing is that use least words one thing second thing is that try to uh, means uh, ensure that it should consist of at least it should contain almost 80 to 90% of the content means just after seeing the synopsis you should able to recollect almost 80 to 90% of the content so try to uh, minimize the use of words okay so in this what is the main focus so words should be least and content should be maximized 
So almost 80%, 90% content should be there in this one page and use least words so that in one uh, glance you, you can revise this. So this is the best strategy which will help you in revision. Initially underwriting and then making synopsis. So remember one thing, writing is very, very important. If you will develop uh, uh, this, you know, the art of writing, first making synopsis and then answer writing, so that, uh, you know, uh, your process will become much easier. And most of the selected students I have seen, ki they have good habit of writing. So this is very important. Because once you write, it helps in actually the, that information absorb in your mind. Because even I uh, have done experiment to some time to save time, I think it is better not to dictate, just explain. So in that, I, I have understood, uh, means I have observed that uh, while uh, explaining without writing, it takes almost same time. Why? Because students usually don't understand the concept uh, in first, you know, in one's explanation. I have to repeat that. So overall time is almost, same time is required. So I think it is much better to dictate. Because once you write gradually, that thing remains in your mind gradually and that is absorbed in your mind. So synopsis is very, very important. So what will be benefit of this? If you can make synopsis, you know, so entire syllabus will become handy. Although it requires commitment, lot of commitment is needed. But it will make your syllabus handy and instantly you, can, you will revise and multiple revisions you can, uh, you can make. It won't take much time. Let us suppose, uh, for example, in entire economy, I will take about uh, um, maybe 43, 45 lectures at the most. So in 45, there will be, if each lecture you will make this, so there will be only 45 pages. Your entire economy, almost 80, 90% content will be there in about 45, at the most 50 pages. So in 50 pages, your entire economy will be there. So what will be benefit? Benefit is that you can easily revise, uh, you know, entire syllabus because revisions are, multi multiple revisions are very important, one thing. Second thing is that ki it will help you to organize information, ki what are topic, what is subtopic, how they are related. So until, unless you understand interrelations, it is difficult to read in for long term. And third thing is that in means, most of the questions require interrelations and holistic understanding. So until, unless you have a holistic framework in your mind, it is difficult to uh, write good answers in mean means because how from where which topic you have to pick pick points because in means you know they have not mentioned the subjects like economy history geography the upsc has mentioned the topics and that topic may have various dimensions some economic dimensions some some maybe some political dimension some and uh, geographical dimension different types of dimension may be there so this will help you to understand things in a holistic manner and will uh, help you to write very good answers so this is very effective but it takes some time uh, I don't think a much time because even you know practically there's a misperception that learning takes much longer time. When I ask the students ki, why you are not learning, so sir, I, I'm reading on daily basis, and uh, but since I don't have time, so that is why I will learn later. So you should remember that once the, the students are attending classes, class uh, usually I think take almost nine ten months. If they can't learn the syllabus uh, in nine ten months, how they can uh, uh, learn everything just before one or two months before exam? So simply, if you are attending classes. Make it sure to learn the same day, okay, and keep on revising in this manner. Apart from that, you know, for learning, uh, in psychology, there's a long-term memory is called semantic memory. So in semantic means meaningful. So you will able to retain only when you make things meaningful. And meaningful means when you think how it is similar, how it is different. So learning is a very active, th uh, uh, you know, active thinking. And second thing is that uh, long-term memory is well organized until as you properly organize ki what is uh, the which is which, how their things are related. Ki this is a part of this is topic, this subtopic, how it is related. So uh, organization is very important to retain something for long, and especially for making it meaningful. For example, like in class, our approach will be for every uh, you know uh, topic. I will ask a lot of questions from students. Ki, okay, what do you think? Where? So the thing is that you should think why and how. So that is important. Learning is very active uh, thinking process. So how to study, uh, we have discussed, okay? focus should be never st uh, study, always learn. Okay, and one more important point here, when you learn, let us suppose you have to study one hour. So uh, how to learn, how, how to ensure that you are learning. For example, study a topic or subtopic, let us suppose 10, 15 minutes, you have learned. Okay, one topic is over, let us suppose after 15 minutes, then don't go to next topic. Just close your copy, close your eyes, 
recollect what was there recollect the points what was topic was what was subtopic what you've read okay try to recollect and then again open the copy see that ke, what you have recollected what percentage you have re recollected maybe after 15 minutes 10 15 20 minutes do this thing okay you may devote two three minutes i think that will be sufficient okay so after learning maybe 15 minutes two three minutes you may devote for recollection recollect and then again see then go through that okay just read again, again learn it again quickly and then again close your copy and again uh, recollect so i think second time you will recollect major part of that so you may do this thing once more so it will take two three minutes then move to second part third part okay and after let's suppose you have to study one hour so i think at least uh, leave 10 minutes for doing this recollection okay what you have studied in the previous 50 minutes learn in this manner and after learning then underline and once you have learned then you can make synopsis okay so this is how to study now next point is that how much to study so how much to study so what is need of the exam to so need of civil service exam you know uh, do you think it needs research orientation so obviously no so what is needed the level or the depth which is required is that you should be thorough with basic concepts so basics should be uh, crystal clear so first of all basic concepts should be crystal clear because until as you know the basics you cannot analyze any current situation for example like uh, recently there is a lot of debate over agricultural bills okay, like apmcs will become ineffective or msp may not be there okay or farmers may be exploited so if if do, if you don't know what is apmc what issues are there and so how would you understand the implications of this law okay like one act is on contract farming if you don't know what is contract farming what are pros and cons of this what has been the status till now so what issues were there till now then how would you understand the implications of the new changes in that bill so first of all or similarly in any subject like it is not only in economy for example if you don't know the basics of uh, our constitution so how do you understand the any uh, constitutional issue uh, so the thing is that you should know basics first of all then from basics you have to go to the level of analysis analysis of that topic especially in the current context analysis in current context whatever issue is going on right now uh, in the current context this is the need of the exam only you should know abc basics and then you should try to analyze it to the uh, means whatever what issues are there uh, right now uh, from the perspective of upsc so this is the only thing which is needed the level key basics plus analysis okay and next thing is that key uh, how much to study key you know how many sources you should fo uh, fo uh, follow so my suggestion is that use the least sources least actually books or any kind of study material it is a very common saying ki it is much better to study one book 10 times than studying 10 books once okay to so got the point ki it is better ki you can just select the best study material or book or class notes whatever you think is best just revise learn it and revise it again and again instead of going to other books because what happens if let us suppose you study one uh, maybe you are attending classes you may uh, attend uh, you may just learn class notes superficially just go through the class notes you have not learned and if you uh, go through the same chapter from other book you know it will create rather confusion and it is there is a skeff robinson hypothesis which says that ki moderately similar items create confusion so it, i repeat once more ki, and that is technically called negative transfer that if you have read a topic from maybe attended class note or read from book you have not learned you have just read you have some broad idea and if you read the same topic from other book so the second reading will create confusion why because you know uh, every author or a teacher has different way of expression so you will be confused ke in that book it was just like that here it is somewhat like that it will create confusion and rather second reading will lead to rather wastage of your time and will be counterproductive but what is better way best thing is that ke uh, learn for example uh, once you have attended class or whichever source you are reading learn that revise it again and again once you it is in your mind then if you go through second source 
then your approach will be entirely different. Then you will be uh, just scanning the second book, you will be searching what is new. You will be revising the first one. Okay, I already know, I already know. So once you have learned thoroughly first source, when you go through second book, then from second book you will be just matching what you know, what you don't know. Your process will be very interactive, very interesting also, and you will be searching what is new in that. So that should be the approach. So just like uh, I'll quote here Shiv Khira's quotations, ki winners don't do different things, they do things differently. Okay, so you have to be very selective in uh, so, uh, in selecting a basic study material. That may be uh, any standard book or NCRT or any, you know, uh, printed material of any coaching institute or maybe class notes. So whichever you think is best, just learn it thoroughly, revise it again and again, again and again. Then only go through second source or maybe third source to supplement. Okay, so approach is very important. Now remember one thing, ki, uh, uh, the uh, targets must be realistic. So how much to study means ki don't try to study too much. It is not needed. Because a lot of students, they actually, they top in first attempt. And and in the last few years, you know, uh, first and second attempt, uh, select uh, the students who are selecting first and second attempt, the percentage has increased as compared to maybe 7, 8 years, 10 years back. The reason is that uh, now the approach is, you should know the holistic understanding. You need not require to do research or analysis. So because if this uh, some research is needed in every area, then nobody would have qualified in first or second attempt. So what the point to research is not needed. So uh, for this purpose, the most important thing is that uh, target should be realistic. So don't study too much. Too much is not needed. I don't say you should study maybe uh, 14 hours or 16 hours a day. A lot of people, some people suggest 16 hours or 18 hours a day you should study. So I don't think it is practically feasible 16, 18 hours. And uh, most important is quality. So I think 10 hours may be okay. It may vary, means it will vary from person to person. Maybe even uh, 6 hours may be enough for self-study. So it varies from person to person. The most important thing is realistic targets. Realistic targets. Achha, why I'm talking about realistic target? Because let us suppose if you start preparation and you make a target that in economy I will study these three books, in history these five books, in geography these four books. So is it practically possible? Can you think? Can you read uh, means three, four books in every subject? Because subject is too long. So what will happen? You will study superficially and that will not help. In negative marking you will lose rather. Okay. So earlier it was said said in prelims you should study wide extensive study is needed and means selective intensive but remember one thing uh, in prelims also wide extensive study will not help much because negative marking is there before negative marking that approach was much better but not, right now to some extent in prelims also you should also be selective intensive to some extent you can think of wide extensive but not much so targets must be realistic that is very important one very important actually limitation which i have observed Okay, what students actually they do blunder is that they make unrealistic targets and the problem is that this if you make unrealistic target uh, then let us suppose you make a target okay, I'll within one month I will learn economy completely and I have to study three books okay and whatever your daily target let us suppose you can't achieve even half or approximately at the most half consistently you are doing this so you know if you make a huge target which you can't achieve, what will happen? From back of your mind, you will know that even if you put 100% of your effort, you are not going to achieve your target. So what will happen? So you will think whether I will put effort or not. I'm not going to achieve my target. So what will happen? You will lose all motivation. This is the most important problem. So if you really want to qualify, so you should move at your pace. Okay. And rather, let us suppose if you have, you are starting, some of you may be starting now, and uh, now we don't have much time, we have slightly more than six months. So if let us suppose your pace is slow, you can't study maybe uh, 10 hours a day, maybe even you can study maybe five hours, no problem. What you should do, move towards your target, maybe slowly. Even if you can't qualify in this year, no problem. Next year you should qualify, but you must qualify once you are, uh, you, you are preparing for this exam. And it means that you may study just less or maybe one source in each subject. Okay. But basics will be thorough. That is very, very important. So that is why realistic targets are very important. Don't try to study too much. That is why I told you 
least books you should follow uh, hardly one prime book and then one or two supplementary in every subject every area so uh, that is why as i told you ke how much to study means ke uh, don't study too much it is not needed for this exam because a lot of people top in first or second attempt of itself so it means that they, they don't do research they don't study much books they are very selective okay and uh, selectively you can do uh, go by relevance first basic book book cover to cover and then go, you can go by relevance apart from that you know uh, which is uh, relatively best source so my suggestion is that if you are attending any coaching the best thing is class notes so what why class notes the basic material best is class notes the three things are there in class notes first of all the, they are relevant because teachers have idea about the uh, orientation of upsc because orientation of upsc is much different from that of universities because even as uh, when i used to teach in delhi university in uh, uh, in um, ba third year there is a paper uh, economic development and policy in india that is same as indian economy this labels almost similar but there you know the approach was entirely different and whatever we used to teach in entire one year that was much lesser than what we teach here in few hours in 45 lectures almost double of that with a much dynamic approach so approach is very different here for this exam okay so class notes one thing i told you is relevance okay first thing which is very very important for the exam now second thing second thing is that class notes are easiest thing to learn why because you have understood in the class and this is my challenge like economics is supposed to be difficult subject so this is my challenge ke i will make you understand if you face any problem that is not your problem let me know it is my problem how i will make it understand make you understand okay so they are easiest to learn because you have understood here you have written in your own words so obviously it is the easiest and third thing is that they are concise because uh, they are uh, because how much pages you can write how much we can dictate in limited hours so they are actually concise easiest to learn and most relevant so that is why you, i think if you are attending class any coaching any class then first priority should be class notes and make it sure if you really want to qualify to whatever class you attend learn it immediately the same day or at the most by next day and keep on revising the best base is actually the class note then you can as per the suggestion of teacher you may add any book okay now next i'll come to books to so which book you have to study now this is a very difficult question the study material means from where to study books now in books when we talk about books first of all ncert to so, uh, first name is actually ncerts so in economics you know in class 11th there is a book called indian economic development indian economic development that is 11th class ncert so in this book you will find basic features of indian economy like planning in india economic reforms in india poverty unemployment in india infrastructure development like these basic things about indian economy in class 12th there are two books in class 12th ncert one is micro m i c r o micro economics and other is macro m a c r o macro economics to so micro economics and macro economics now what are actually these these are two branches of economics micro economics is one branch and macro another important branch so what is meaning of micro first of all what is meaning of micro and macro micro you must know is small and macro means large so what we study in micro economics so we study not a small unit micro means small but we study individual units means one person one firm one product one unit is studied here and macro means large so in macro economics we study economic system as a whole okay entire economy economic system as a whole so here we study individual units and here entire economic system so what do you think which branch of economics or which book is relevant for your upsc examination so obviously uh your syllabus is we have discussed indian economy so important is macro obviously macro is important so you may go through macro economics it is not needed micro as such is not needed so indian economic development and macro economics okay so but uh, there is one issue in in this uh, in economics uh, the ncert don't cover much of your syllabus this is the problem 
तो इफ यू गो थ्रू दीज बुक्स और इवन नो नीड टू स्टडी एनी नाइन टेंथ बिकॉज हार्डली यू वोट फाइन एनी मच कंटेंट इन दैट तो इफ यू गो थ्रू ऑल एन सी आर टीज यू विल नॉट गेट हार्डली यू विल नॉट कवर इवन वन थर्ड ऑफ योर सिलेबस दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम तो कवरेज ऑफ एन सी आर टी इज टू लो इन इकोनॉमी इन अदर सब्जेक्ट लाइक इन हिस्ट्री जोग्राफी एन सी आर टीज आर वेरी गुड एंड कवर सिग्निफिकेंट पार्ट ऑफ योर सिलेबस बट इन इकोनॉमी द कवरेज इज लेस कवरेज इट विल कवर हार्डली वन थर्ड ऑफ योर सिलेबस आई एम नॉट सींग दे आर नॉट अप टू द मार्क दे आर गुड बट द कवरेज इज लेस एक्चुअली योर हार्डली वन थर्ड ऑफ योर सिलेबस विल बी कवर्ड नॉट इवन वन थर्ड फ्रॉम प्रॉब्लम्स नाइ दर फ्रॉम प्रॉब्लम्स नॉर फ्रॉम मीन्स परस्पेक्टिव दिस इज वन इशू apart from that you know as i told you when it comes to books which book should, should we follow this is very difficult question for me because uh, uh, problem is that no good book is there for economy so which book should i suggest i can give you names because students usually want name of books so uh, among standard books uh, one is indian economy indian economy performance and policies performance and policies by uma kapila by uma kapila to so indian economy performance and policies to so uma kapila she is lecturer in delhi university to so this book is uh, written for ba uh, uh, ba uh, ba students third year final year ba students to so, but this is uh, uh, not very bulky so if you want basics it is syllabus is slightly similar to that of indian economic development but it is slightly more elaborate so it will cover maybe 60% of your syllabus approximately uh, 50 to 60% of your syllabus although there are the other very famous book actually uh, which is a very good and standard book is dat and sundaram indian economy by dat and sundaram but dat and sundaram is too lengthy it is i think about uh, more much more than 1000 pages means maybe i think close to 1500 pages so now you don't have so much time to you will study the huge bulky book actually for gs so uh, this not needed as such Uh, uma kapila is relatively uh, less bulky maybe i think 500 pages approximately so you can go through this book apart from that the books which are written for uh, competitive exam uh, they are actually in sub standard almost uh, most of the books uh, you know like the tmh book is very famous but there are lot of mistakes in that this is the problem actually so most of the books are sub standard which are written for which are available for competitive examinations so this is one very difficult question ki which book can i suggest this is the problem okay to so ncert and this but here uh, i can provide you one solution for this if let us suppose you are attending uh, our classes to so our uh, means, uh, coverage here is very very comprehensive although i take some more time around almost 30 50 to 40 percent more time than other teachers but uh, uh, our class notes are so comprehensive ki you will get uh, means most of the questions in prelims as well as in mains uh, for example whatever i am teaching in just class note just from my class notes uh, if you just follow class note and nothing no book no current nothing then it is sure you will be above cut off because every year I, as i told you ki in almost more than 18 years i am teaching and uh, hardly there may be any year when at least 50% questions didn't click in prelims i don't remember maybe some year may be there but uh, on an average 60 to 70% sometime 80% questions click directly from class notes you know what is cut off in prelims slightly less than 50 means around 50% and it is sure ki you will get at least 60 to 70% at least 60 to 70% questions directly from class notes i'm repeating if you don't study any book if you don't have any background of economics if you don't study any newspaper nothing just from class notes it is sure you will be above cut off so what i'm challenging i'm challenging ke i will reduce your effort i told you just like in upsc they say ke anything under the sky could be asked but what i can what i can challenge you i can challenge i can challenge ke don't worry just go whatever is there in your copy i will reduce your effort from anything under the sky to anything in your copy just go through that and you you can check this you will get and every year this year and after exam i got get lot of messages from students ke sir we got most of the questions initially it is difficult to believe ke just class note may cover so much questions but uh, gradually when you will attend classes or may go through class notes you can have class notes also from any student so uh, you will realize you can check the the content 
one thing in means this is in prelims in means you know i told you questions are more predictable because more than 80 percent questions are directly from syllabus so in means you can expect at least 80 percent questions directly from class notes 80 to 90 percent you can expect directly from class notes and this is i'm talking on the base of my previous experience Achha, why uh, why it is so it is reason is that ke, uh, one thing is that it is comprehensive in the sense i'm taking some more time here okay and uh, second thing is that okay, I am doing research every year when there is prelims because I am, I have made this commitment from you people okay, don't worry just follow class note and forget about everything you will be much above cut off okay then I am very much concerned so if question didn't click from my class note what would happen so what would happen to my students so I have to do research okay, what kind of questions are asked should we I add something uh, some new topics or should I delete some uh, those topics have become now less relevant now so I'm doing research every year after prelims after means so we are doing this research actually uh, for you people so if you just follow class notes uh, in economy they are so comprehensive and lot of toppers have told me the every year uh, the students who select in first attempt and some students who were uh, whom I taught maybe four, five years back uh, they tell me sir we are confined mainly to your notes in economy and not one, at least 20 selected students have told me this thing. Okay, we have not read much actually beyond class notes. At the most, just current updation will be needed. But I'm not saying you don't study current. I'm saying ke, if you even follow class notes, you'll be above cut off. Ajah, what will be my approach here? My approach, as I told you, will be I'll take a basics, ABCD of economics, and then I will analyze in the context of the current issues in newspaper articles, magazine articles. Rather, I will say instead of studying books, whatever topic I will teach in class, try to go through one or two newspaper articles on that topic. Just put on Google. Let's suppose I'll take up FDI today. So put just FDI or FDI in India, go through two, three articles and try to correlate with that what is going on. So whatever topic we'll discuss, put in Google and just go through that. That is better approach. Now next is, uh, th this is regarding books I told you, ke, uh, there is no dearth of list of books, just put on Google, ke, uh, the recommended books for Indian economy will get a long list, but the problem is that ke, uh, a lot of books, most of the books, in the books which are good books, they are not written for UPSC exam, like Datan Sundaram, Mishra Puri, even this book, uh, but this is less bulky, that is why you can go through. Okay, and uh, the books which are written for this exam, so they are substandard, or almost all are substandard. This is one problem. Even uh, like in TMH book, lot of mistakes are there. I wonder how actually that book is so famous and so much mistakes are there. So this is about uh, the books. Now, now finally in this current, current affairs. So what you should study, so I think uh, as I told you already, your target should be realistic. So for current affairs, I think one newspaper, only one is sufficient at this moment. One newspaper is sufficient. Whichever you think, I think at this moment it hardly matters. The Hindu or Indian Express, or if you don't like any newspaper, you can go through, it hardly matters. Just one newspaper and, uh, and one magazine. That is one monthly magazine. Magazine should be monthly. So, uh, and right now, like, uh, you know, one, uh, this uh, magazines, uh, the best thing, I think, uh, to, uh, some internet sources are better. So especially the best thing, I think, uh, um, Vision's uh, monthly magazine, current FS magazine is quite good. It is concise also. So I think just one source will be sufficient initially, initially. Later, once you have, to, uh, once you have focused on, learned the basic concepts, everything, then you may add. Like maybe Yojana, Kurukshet, don't study in the beginning. Okay, until unless you have uh, thorough with the basic concepts, so don't study Kurukshet or Yojana or some bulky books like uh, magazines like Frontline, that is fortnightly, so don't go through that. Just one magazine is sufficient monthly. So any one newspaper, any one magazine, I think Vision's Current Affairs magazine, that is available freely on net, so I think is, that's good because it is concise, this is one, and content-wise it is good. Okay, others are also good. It doesn't mean that that is best. I cannot say that this is best, but there are other sources also. So, apart from that, but uh, the traditional magazines are not good in general now. Like uh, Competition Success Review used to be very famous. Now that is not up to the mark. Okay, Chronicle is okay, but I think these sources which you will find from internet that are better. Okay, apart from that, 
uh, in current uh, affairs what you should study what you should not study so first of all uh, what you should not study that is very important thing what you should not study in newspaper magazine so first thing is that ke the company specific news in the business page you know uh, a lot of news are company specific so those are not important one thing second thing those things which changes on daily basis like census goes up and down rupee appreciate depreciate minor so uh, no need actually to uh, see the daily changes actually those things which variable which, which things vary on daily basis other thing as such data especially monthly data is not at all important monthly even quarterly is not much important mainly annual data is somewhat important but regarding data to so never try to cram data but try to analyze data just try to analyze okay why how what is meaning why it is increasing why it is decreasing to so try to analyze once you analyze you will automatically remember okay apart from that uh, uh, any uh, thing which has having uh, much technical issues don't go in technicalities like rbi or cbi issue guideline for nbfcs etc so to not so much important acha what is important now the important obviously is those news which are actually have long term implications okay like any major change in policy of government okay any kind of change in policy government scheme or any article on indian economy by an economist especially on those topics which are related to your syllabus so the most important thing is that just cram the syllabus of mains and every any topic related to that is relevant okay especially those news which have social relevance relevance uh, to general public those are important so i just give you brief idea ki which news is important and which is not important for example on daily newspaper hardly i think one or two or three news are relevant for upsc other news are not much relevant only broad idea is sufficient okay apart from that uh, related to uh, some updation economic survey is also is very important document economic survey and now there are two volumes volume 1 and volume 2 this is very bulky and certainly it is very important also for upsc exam economic survey is a very important document so uh, which is more important volume 1 or 2 so obviously volume 1 is much more important especially for mains because in volume 1 there is analysis and uh, based on research and give some suggestions so this is analytical and more important especially for mains point of view in uh, volume 2 there is mainly data data of indian economy some trends and analysis based on that data only so this is less important for mains point of view for prelims also volume 1 is relatively more important as compared to 2 but it is also important for paper uh, for prelims for mains this is most important okay so now an uh, economic survey is very bulky you know ke uh, means one economic survey i think it is about more than 300 pages so it is almost both are about 700 pages and the they are uh, means pages are also quite uh, means uh, large so don't study economic survey as such the best thing is that ke uh, you know economic survey is presented just one day before budget so on 31st of january uh, economic survey will be presented on 1st february you know budget is presented so uh, wait for some time i think within 15 20 days you will find summary so on online you will get summary so you may go through any summary available vision is uh, vision also publishes summary and that summary will be i think about 70 80 pages of both the uh, both the uh, volumes so i think summary will be sufficient so don't study economic survey study summary because if you study economic survey th- that is too lengthy and not much important for much relevant for everything is not relevant for exam and next is actually budget so budget uh, is not so heavy and not uh, so i think uh, from newspaper just two or uh, maybe from one or two newspaper you can go through and from maybe just uh, one or two magazines you can go through okay so maybe two newspaper two magazine sufficient okay so budget is not much like in one magazine you may find uh, if they will give actually special cover on budget it may be maybe 7 8 pages at the most 15 pages in one magazine so two sources i think sufficient one in newspaper and two sources that is more than sufficient so it is relatively size is very small relatively as compared to economics economic survey is very heavy so just go through summary of 60 70 80 pages at, at the most so this is regarding actually newspaper and uh, current okay so this is now last finally i will do i'll show you brief analysis uh, of uh, this acha before that as i told you 
कि स्पेशली द प्रॉब्लम इज इन स्टडी मटीरियल इन इकोनॉमी एंड दिस इज रियली अ डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर मी कि विच बुक शुड आई सजेस्ट सो एज आई टोल्ड यू कि इफ यू विल अटेंड आर क्लासेज तो आई थिंक हार्डली एनी बुक इज नीडेड रादर आई सजेस्ट कि इफ यू आर अटेंडिंग क्लासेज देन डोंट रीड एनी थिंग यू नीड नॉट रिक्वायर एनी बैकग्राउंड ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स एंड आई कैन प्रोमिस थ्री थिंग्स फ्रॉम टू माई स्टूडेंट्स वन आई टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी कि यू विल बी मच अब ऑफ कट ऑफ इन प्रिलिम्स एंड इन मेन्स and you need not require to wait for long whatever topic we will cover here na after that topic just see any question of any exam you will know you can solve most of the questions of in previous years just see previous 20 30 years questions of upsc or any other exam you can solve most of those question questions you will get idea once we cover one topic just see any topic uh, any question from that topic you can solve any newspaper article you will understand if you don't understand show me that article ओके तो वन थिंग आई टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी यू विल बी मच अब कट ऑफ जस्ट एक्चुअली लर्निंग क्लास नोट्स बट नोट्स विल बी आई डिक्टेट अ लॉट एज आई टोल्ड यू एंड आई टेक मोर लेक्चर्स तो अराउंड आई इनिशियली प्लान फोर्टी बट मे बी इट मे टेक फोर्टी फाइव लेक्चर्स ओके तो फोर्टी थ्री नॉर्मली बट मे गो टू अप टू फोर्टी फाइव लेक्चर्स तो मोर लेक्चर्स एंड आई ऑल्सो डिक्टेट रिलेटिवली मोर second thing what i can promise you is that you will understand all newspaper articles like whichever article is there whatever topic we will take up in class you will understand almost all articles in any newspaper any magazine and rather i will be connecting with those articles whatever is going on whatever here my approach i told you already uh, i'll take up basics and then i'll correlate with the uh, the uh, current issues with newspaper articles and uh, third thing which i can uh, promise is that ki just learn class notes not by attending classes just if you have learned revise them again and again you have understood then discuss economy with any person who is having ma in economics or maybe economics optional you you would know ki where you stand okay to so the person who has done ma in economics or may have uh, from any university from even uh, the best university in the country okay or uh, maybe having ma uh, means having optional just discuss indian economy issue you will know where you stand but remember one thing i won't be taking up pure theory like micro and international economics i won't be going in the th- pure theory because that is not needed for gs in indian economy you will know ki where you stand okay so this these three things i can promise and what else you you know uh, you want beyond this okay so this is difficult to believe maybe but uh, i think you may discuss with previous students they will tell you or you can check the notes you will get the idea regarding the how much questions are there uh, in uh, the paper and as i told you already ki i won't give you this excuse ki i could not understand don't worry i'll make things very simple for everything i will give you very simple illustrations here okay i'll let you think in the classes so i don't think it will be difficult you will understand everything i will not give you this excuse say i i it is technical subject so i have i have no background i could not understand no i'll assume that you don't have any background of economics okay to uh, now and finally as uh, a broad analysis of the uh, questions uh, projector to so just brief last uh, some uh, brief analysis of questions ki how many questions were there from which topics in prelims as in and, and in mains so you know i told you ki relevance uh, is given by provided by syllabus and questions so this is syllabus of prelims to so preliminary exam gs paper 1 syllabus to so in prelims as i told you ki syllabus is not very comprehensive so syllabus will hardly help you to identify which are relevant areas only just two lines are written economic and social development sustainable development poverty inclusion demographic social sector initiatives etc they have mentioned etc but as i told you if you see actual questions maximum questions are from finance money banking finance they have not directly mentioned the name as such but maximum questions are from that and second is from external sector like fdi foreign investment international organizations maximum questions are from that even they have not mentioned so the syllabus of prelims will not give you much idea okay now see the questions the topics the questions you know uh maximum questions are from money and banking so i have analyzed the questions of last 3 years but trend is similar somewhat similar 
तो यू कैन सी दिस ईयर देर वर हाउ मेनी ऑलमोस्ट टेन क्वेश्चन वर देयर फ्रॉम मनी एंड बैंकिंग मनी मनी सप्लाई आरबीआई बैंकिंग फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन अबाउट टेन क्वेश्चन वर देयर ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल ब्रीफली आई गिव यू आइडिया वन क्वेश्चन वॉज ऑन मनी सप्लाई कि इफ यू विदड्रॉ मनी फ्रॉम योर बैंक अकाउंट वॉट विल बी द इम्पैक्ट ऑन मनी सप्लाई ओके ब्रीफली अदर क्वेश्चन वॉज ऑन हुडी तो वॉट इज हुडी एंड दैट इज दे हैव आज इन हिस्टोरिकल परस्पेक्टिव हुडी विज इन द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ पोस्ट पोस्ट हर्ष हर्ष पीरियड बट हुडी आई हैव टोल्ड हेयर कि इफ वन फॉर्म विल बाय इनपुट ऑन क्रेडिट इट विल गिव अ पीस ऑफ पेपर दैट इज कॉल्ड हुडी ओके वी विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल लेटर इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो तो इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो मीन्स टोटल प्रॉफिट ऑफ अ कंपनी डिवाइड बाय टोटल इंटरेस्ट पेड टू बैंक तो बिकॉज एनपीएज आर इंक्रीजिंग तो बिकॉज ऑफ इंक्रीज इन एनपीए यू नो दिस टर्म इज रिलेटेड विद एनपीए दैट इज वाई इट वॉज आज तो आई जस्ट गिव यू ब्रीफ आइडिया कि विच क्वेश्चन वर आज एन अदर क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड विद इन्फ्लेशन के लाइक डब्ल्यू पी आई ऑन सी डिफरेंस इन डब्ल्यू पी आई एंड सी पी आई सम स्टेटमेंट वर गिवेन के लाइक द वेटेज ऑफ फूड आइटम्स इन सी पी आई इज दिस मच एंड डब्ल्यू पी आई डज नॉट कवर सर्विस इज वेरी बेसिक फ्रॉम दिस रिलेटेड ऑन इन्फ्लेशन रिलेटेड टू दिस अदर क्वेश्चन वॉज ऑन नॉन फाइनेंशियल डेट तो विच इज डेट ऑफ नॉन फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर अदर क्वेश्चन वॉज एक्सपेंशनरी मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी एक्सपेंशनरी मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी मीन्स की मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी विच इंक्रीजेज मनी सप्लाई तो दे वॉज लाइक ऑप्शन वर लाइक रिडक्शन इन एस एल आर इंक्रीज इन मार्जिनल स्टैंडिंग फैसिलिटी रेट और रेपो रेट ओके अदर क्वेश्चन वॉज फोर ऑप्शन वर गिवन विच इज करेक्टली मैच कॉमर्शियल पेपर दिस सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ डिपॉजिट कॉल मनी जीरो कूपर मॉन जस्ट बेस टर्म्स एक्चुअली and other is on uh, one question on cyber insurance in finance uh, we can include two questions were there related to somewhat agriculture one is agriculture uh, they have asked about the uh, agriculture credit through cooperative banks so we can put either here or maybe in agriculture so through cooperative banks i have put it here and other is on kisan credit card so what kind of loan are given to farmers under kcc kisan credit card so we can put under finance or agriculture so i have put in finance so there were 10 questions this year on money banking finance Okay, although two questions which are related with agricultural finance may be put under agriculture also. Okay, so maximum questions are from here. Then second is external sector. This year you can see uh, eight questions were there. This year eight questions were there from external sector. So the questions were one was actually uh, which thing will reduce uh, the impact of global financial crisis. So if there is global financial crisis, which thing will help to reduce the impact? Like more forex, more foreign banks. or capital account convertibility okay second question was re related with uh, uh, reserve trench gold trench or reserve trench so we maintain foreign action reserve in reserve trench with imf so they have asked related with which institution so answer was imf one was actually based on some database to so indo sri lanka trade indo nepal trade trade of textiles three statements were given other is which of the following are members of g20 so g20 is a important organization because all major economic decisions at global level is taken by g20 so it consists of developed countries and emerging market economies like india brazil china argentina etc so members they have asked and another question was on uh, export import ki export of uh, goods are less than our import of goods but export of services are more than import of services so some this kind of question uh, was asked on this other question was uh, ki west texas intermediate is related with what so it is related with crude oil okay it was in news actually because price uh, after covid price reduced so uh, too much so that is why it was in news price became rather negative other is one question is from wto like trims trade related investment measures another question was on fdi so basic concept uh, related with fdi what is fdi okay so these are uh, questions from external sector maximum second maximum second then in the last 3 years there were much questions from agriculture uh, like uh, this year as i told you they have asked public investment in agriculture which of the following is included in public investment in agriculture other was actually increase in price of rice rice which thing will increase price of rice okay other is uh, 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 msp there was a question on msp ki it is announced for all cereals so two statement and they have used the uh, second uh, so it is not for all other is that ut and state decide it was written so it is fixed by center not by state or ut so uh, another actually so these questions were there in on agriculture 
other one question was on economic uh, reforms after economic reforms from 1991 what was the impact of reforms like on employment and rural development etc other question was on infrastructure ki public key infrastructure is related to what to mainly related to security one question was from government budgeting so in government budgeting you know as per uh, fiscal responsibility and budget management act frbma three statements are introduced in parliament so they have asked one statement macroeconomic framework statement is introduced in parliament as per which act to f as per frbma so from budgeting so these are the major areas okay so uh, maximum question for money and banking then external sector okay balance of payment exchange rate foreign trade foreign investment international organizations then agriculture okay agriculture marketing etc and government budgeting means budget taxation then industry and infrastructure then planning and reforms then inclusive uh, growth poverty employment and then government schemes and miscellaneous areas so these are the broad areas from uh, for prelims okay now next is for means so you know uh, the syllabus of means is very very important so this is the syllabus of means first of all so i have divided this syllabus in uh, uh, six areas mean five areas and then next miscellaneous okay so first part is indian economy general like planning mobilization of resources growth development employment inclusive growth these topics so in last uh, uh, you can see uh, five years so i have just made analysis of five years so in last 5 years 10 questions were there from this okay so on an average two questions you can expect from this topic second is government budgeting to so government budgeting like fiscal policy means budgetary policy and taxation about six questions were asked in the last 5 years so effects of liberalization to so you must cram this point this is syllabus of gs3 i have divided into uh, the uh, you know i have put headings only to so effects of liberalization on the indian economy changes in industrial policy food processing industries etc even fdi is also related with this because they have not mentioned fdi but lot of questions were there on foreign investment fdi especially so six questions were there in the last 5 years then infrastructure and investment so five infrastructure they have mentioned energy ports roads airport railway and public private partnership this is related with investment models various ppp models are there so in the last 5 years three questions were asked from this topic agriculture you know is very very important and in the last 5 years how many questions were there 17 questions were there from agriculture so it means that usually three sometime four questions uh, are there from agriculture so all these topics storage transportation marketing e technology farm subsidies msp pds buffer stocks food security technology missions economics of animal rearing land reforms these are the topics even other topics could also be mentioned they have not mentioned agricultural finance agriculture insurance mechanization etc so those those could be included here and others are miscellaneous so you can see in the last 5 uh, years only six questions i put under miscellaneous category so you can see ke more than 80% questions were directly from the uh, syllabus okay so uh, now since time uh, we don't have time to analyze questions i wanted to do just analysis of the questions of means last year in gs3 there were nine questions four and plus uh, uh, you know five nine questions were there but we don't have time to analyze those questions so this is the broad uh, means uh, strategy of discussion uh, but uh, as i told you ki if you are following attending classes then uh, no need uh, to means worry about resources anything just notes will be quite sufficient as we will be taking up very comprehensively okay so anyhow that is all from uh, for today okay best of luck